going to be able to get out there. We've got an extra suitcase. She's got her wedding dress in the suitcase. I've got my suit in the suitcase. We've got the wedding, wedding rings. rings. You've got to make the best of what you've got, and this is what we've got at the moment. Midday, the snow is finally beginning to ease. But despite Gatwick's valiant efforts, the runway still isn't safe to open. In the South Terminal, Gatwick staff are working hard to keep everyone happy. Information passenger assistant Richard Voice has been at the airport for over 30 hours. We don't know for sure what airlines are going to be doing what tomorrow. Well, if you don't get any joy, then come back and see me, all right? We don't know where their aircraft is going to be. It won't be until tomorrow that we get a better idea. Stick around. It's not going to be the quickest experience of your life, but it will slowly get there. What's always great about bad days like this is everybody pulls together and everybody helps out. You know, no, as good as we are, we yeah, can't determine what Mother Nature's going to do, can you, really? You can't, you know, it's, it's a bit like yeah. saying to us, yeah, you know, can you go out and sweep the runway for us, really? Yeah, I probably could, but I'm not going to make any difference by doing it. I couldn't get any details up because they're closed at the moment, so there's no way of getting any information up from Heathrow. That's why you need to check round the corner with Skybreak, my love. All right, who's next? But there is some good news, at least, for star-crossed lovers Kim and Andrew. Terminal team leader Willie has found a flight to Las Vegas that will get them to the church on time. But it's from Gatwick's rival airport, 40 miles away. My biggest worry is that we could get to Heathrow and the weather changes and we can't, we can't get out. You know, we've even got to the point where the lady I was, that was talking mm -hmm. to, Sarah, um, we're guaranteeing getting you to Heathrow, no matter what the weather is. The reason we can do that is because she's got a Ford before and she, she would drive you right. up there herself. Really? She's in her day off tomorrow, but she'll come in and drive you up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I think we'll do that. We'll see, that's my personal OK, ride, thanks. So. You are a star. Thank you so much because if, you know, you've tried so hard to do yes, everything we, we'll for do that. us. We'll, we'll do that. Don't the internet. build it up too much just no, in no, case just something happens happen. that we kind of get yeah, it done. Yeah. But, know. you know, we will do our best to try and accommodate Fantastic. what we're Fantastic. Really doing, appreciate you know. that. 6 p.m. Gatwick Silver Command Meeting, headed up by Airport Chief Scott Stanley, reconvenes. Those managers who are unable to get in are on the phone. The airport's on track to open at 6 a.m. tomorrow. The question is, how? Roads tomorrow will continue to be challenging, uh, and I think passable with care is probably the, the, the highways agency's um, terminology. And in terms of the railway, the la latest update I've heard in the railway is there is no update. There are no trains, <laughs> um, and the trains are only coming as far south as, um, as East Croydon and turn around and heading back to London. With transport links down, workers will need to be shipped in. Are your staff local? Is this a, an access issue about getting people in, Simon? It is, yeah. I mean, we've got, we've got a lot of people live on the south coast and a lot rely on public transport, so we're just not getting them in. Because one, one of the things that we're looking to do with our security teams tomorrow is send out 4 by 4s to pick them up. Um, if, if you're really desperate around um, getting people in and it's going to affect our operation, um, could you tie in with our control centre duty manager? Um, we'll, we'll get you the details. And um, there's anything we can do about um, support and getting your staff in here, I think that's all to the good. Right now, you're the you're the bottleneck for what we're going to try to do in the morning. So we'll send out whatever it needs to be. We'll call out the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, we'll, whatever it takes, and we'll go out and we'll collect your people. So if you can organize it, we'll give you the contact in terms of uh, getting that transportation out to them. Let's, let's do that. Gatwick normally deals with over 50 aircraft an hour. Tomorrow morning, we'll see a vastly reduced number. I intend to start off with 10 per hour, and we'll see how things go from there. But we had our fingers burnt in January earlier this year, and there were insufficient stands to accommodate the aircraft. We will increase that depending on the weather and the actual uh, surface temperature. PM. The first aircraft to arrive at Gatwick for two days touches down. Empty but ready for takeoff tomorrow, full of passengers. We are getting there. 
I came in at 12.30 yesterday, lunchtime. I finally got to bed at half one this morning here at the airport. I was up again at five this morning and restarted my shift at 6.30, and I'm going home when this is done. At the end of the day, the commitment of the guys you work with here is unbelievable. The freak weather cost Gatwick dear. Average passenger numbers in December fell by 11%, sending revenue down by a whopping £4 million. As the snow continues to clear, the festive season brings some cheer to the airport. It's Christmas Eve, and in the South Terminal, Information Passenger Assistant Stuart Bone is on duty. With midnight approaching and no flights scheduled until the morning, all should be quiet. We'll see. So, oh my God, look, it's empty up here. I didn't expect that at all. And what brings you to uh, the stuck here? So well, I'm stuck here, fly on Boxing Day morning. It's the only way I can get here. Okay, so. It's uh, 10 past 7, Boxing Day morning, that's when I leave. Yeah. And so there's no public transport to Gatwick. Uh, between this evening and nine o'clock, Boxing Day morning. All oh, right, and wh wh where have you had to come from then? Oh, just Croydon. But, oh, right. uh, yeah, taxis are about oh, something like uh, 50 pounds excess off, so I thought, right, well, I'll come down here anyway. Well, so, at least it's nice and quiet, and you should be able to, you know, choose yourself one of these uh, deluxe <laughs> sleeping uh, areas. Right. Well, have yeah. a good one anyway. That's strange, though, isn't it? Only lives in Croydon, and he's come down here for two days. Huh? Even the birds have come in to keep in the warm look. 3 a.m. Christmas Day. And as Stuart heads home, he hands over to Richard Voice. We just said, yeah. off you go. Yeah. And then I've got this. Yeah. Christmas He's in Day charge now. All to myself, eh? He's in all charge. I want for Christmas is an airport. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Merry to you, Christmas, too. Richard. European. Thank you, darling. Morning, ladies and gents. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Under Gatwick's new management, over 300 people have lost their jobs. With the possibility of more cuts, Richard is resigned to spending Christmas Day on an eight-hour shift, leaving his family to open the presents without him. At the end of the day, that you're putting food in your mouth and everybody else at home, and you know you, you've got a job. It's so apparent this past sort of three or four months up here, the amount of people that have, that have moved on. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's quite a marked change, really. This is the arrivals hall, Christmas Day. That's real peace and quiet, that, isn't it? How bizarre is that? There's no calls going out, there's no people here, there's no noise at all in this airport. It's completely and utterly dead. Winter 2011. New management at Gatwick are instigating major change. Is this the email over the weekend? Senior manager Marcus Stanton is responsible for 2 million square feet of terminals and 500 staff. So the general principle here is to try and keep everything behind the column lines. So some of the issues we have are around the cus kiosks. All of Marcus's workforce are under review, including the IPAs. Our information and passenger assistance role was put together around 2006. Departure screens are upstairs. Now's our opportunity to think we're changing round here. What do we need of that frontline team? The new management structure has seen over 300 jobs go since the current owners took over in late 2009. I'm quite open and honest with the, with the guys on the shop floor. We are going to turn some of your lives slightly upside down. Um, but we're not paying you as a charity to come here and work. It's a stressful time for workers like Richard Voice. Like any job, you just want to be appreciated and you want to be recognised for what you do. 
I think that's like anybody, isn't it? Any job you do, there's, you know, you only have to look at the news at the moment to see how many people want to strike at the moment to see that people feel underappreciated in their jobs. The IPAs have to keep the airport moving as one billion pounds worth of renovation takes place. Make your way down this way for me, please. Thanks very much. So basically what's happened is, where they've got the hoarding in here, it's obviously minimised the amount of space they've got to move people into queues. It's unfortunate, really, but it's unfortunately something that we've got to deal with, so... Management are keen to make their mark, but it doesn't always go down well with staff. Gatwick has employed an ideas man to come up with some blue sky thinking. My role in this is, is basically anything that interacts with passengers. Well, how can we do it better? Head of special projects is former music business executive John Briley. He wants to improve the airport service to non-English speaking passengers and has introduced a new breed of staff to the South Terminal. Por favor, pues hablamos español, pero no lo hablo como debe ser. John's employed a band of multilinguists. They're known as the concierge team. We used to handle people who don't speak English very badly. A lot of people who didn't really have English as their first language were gathered under departure screens. So one of the first things I wanted to do was kind of expedite their process, expedite their, their passage through the, through the airport. What we've got to do is make people welcome because the world's shrinking. Um, everybody's getting on air aircraft now. Why should we have this British attitude that, you know, oh, if we shout loud, loud, loud enough in English, then they'll understand? Up to now, it was left to the passenger assistants, like Richard Voice, to communicate with non-English speakers as best they could. I don't, I'm afraid. It's the only language I do, I'm afraid. Have you got any bags to check in? Do you have to check any bags? Yes. Round here, turn left, zone C. C for Charles. Ryanair. If you go round, right, E. OK, good. I can do Italian, see, I can speak Italian. But with the possibility of job cuts on the horizon, the IPAs are worried about the introduction of the concierge team. There was quite a lot of upset. So initially, I think a lot of the guys felt that they were being pushed out. Um, we didn't feel that we'd been communicated with particularly well regarding it. Management, however, are determined to have their way. For me, it's a no-brainer. You know, it's, it's not complicated, it's not brain surgery or rocket science or any other cliche you want. It's doing it right. When someone does something that's similar to what you do, there's always going to be a sense that, that someone might be moving in on your territory, if you like. Nobody has a monopoly on what's right and what's wrong. One of the worst sayings in the world is, is if it's not broke, don't fix it. Let's change that a little bit. Let's break it and see how it was made up and see if we can, you know, put it back together again in a better way. Alongside the concierges, bosses are trialling electronic information pods throughout the terminal. They're designed to assist passengers at the touch of a button. But the IPAs feel it's yet another intrusion on their role. If they wanted to cut corners and cut costs, then maybe there are bits and pieces in this job that they could do that with. And that's a concern, yeah. Good news is this is the south terminal. Good news is that's the exit. Oh, thank you. She just said it was north. Sorry. I try and concentrate on two very important things when I do my job. Number one, make sure I'm here to do it, and number two, make sure I do it well. Now, we're a team, we all work together, and we're here to provide a service, and if we can do that, then, you know, the job's going well, as far as I'm concerned. Try not to make any enemies if you can, because at the end of the day, you never know when you're going to need someone. Spring. And after months of uncertainty, head of terminals Marcus Stanton has agreed to meet Richard and his fellow passenger assistants in a bid to address their concerns. The IPA to me now, it seems that there's quite a bit of negativity from the past three years with that role, that I think we're trying to get back into a positive place. We, we've, we've talked on many occasions of what is not good behaviour in terms of wandering around in pairs, talking to each other, ignoring passengers, not making eye contact, not stopping a passenger and asking, do you need any help? Do you need any assistance? 
we will performance manage some behaviours that we're not happy with because we need to. And, and I don't think any of you should be proud of some of those negative behaviours we've got. And I do not apologise for that. We, in the last six months, have taken more direct action over numpties that are putting our terminals at risk. We've had people that have pressed brake glasses and no longer work here. I had one this week where there was a hot works permit that created an evacuation. They hadn't had a hot works permit. They no longer work here. Despite the new management's tough stance, the team are keen to point out their virtues. That there are some absolutely brilliant people in this job, really are. You know, th there's so many great guys here that, that have got a lot of talent that they want to show. In all the troubles we've had the last, you know, there's a the snow in that. Mm. You ask anybody, that's when we stood out, because if in doubt, everybody was sent to us. So it, it would be great to see the talent being used, I think. I think that's really where we're getting to. Mm. I still got enthusiasm. I can't knock enthusiasm, but it's got to be positioned right. It's got to yeah, be the motivation's got to come mm -hmm. from above. Yeah. We're motivated and we've been frustrated. What the workers are desperate to know is, do they still have a place in the new Gatwick? Well, I must admit, this is this is quite a refreshing group. It's it's restored my faith a degree. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you some reassurance, and I think one of the reasons why I was happy to come along and talk to you direct was to start trying to build that trust again. What is the, the main part of your role in terms of uh, being an information and passenger assistant? It's the face-to-face -face passenger communication. But I think that's a fundamental part of what we offer as a service to our passengers. And so for me, there, there isn't any significant changes in the ways of working. So I've got to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's reassuring news for the team. It's looking really, really positive. The guys have all come out and they, they feel a bit chipper for it, I think, which is good news. Look at it from this point of view. There's people out there, there are thousands of people by the day load losing jobs. We've, we found out today we're keeping ours. That's good news. Back in the terminals, there's a definite air of relief amongst the team. Just straight down the end there, there's departure, sir. You all right there, girls? Can I help at all? Thomas Cook opens on D. Do you know what? We do. <laughs> it's right there. With the last remaining passengers travelling to Vienna with EasyJet Flight 5357, passengers Hochhauser, Bazas, Hayek, Merrill and Smarga go immediately now to gate 20, gate 20, where the aircraft is about to depart. <laughs> He's still got it. He's still got it. <laughs> now, I think we're more positive that it really is a, a, the passenger focus. We're proud of London Gatwick. If you want me to come up here. <laughs> no, I don't do that.